morning, everybody. Good morning. It's a beautiful day in Eureka. It's great to be in Eureka County. Thanks for coming out today. It's an important day for us. It's the day when we're launching the campaign in the Illinois 18th District. I'm so happy to be starting friends, starting here in a community that's been home for the last 24 years. One of the happiest occasions of my life is the opportunity to begin teaching at the college back in 1992. I had the good fortune of being invited here by Dean Gary Gamer to come to interview here in May of 1992, and I started teaching at the college in August of 1992. It's not only been the place where I've worked, but it's been the place where I've made my life. Many of you who are here today have been colleagues along the way, have been fellow board members, we've worked together charitable organizations, philanthropic ventures. We've worked together because that's the way that communities operate, people helping people. And it's on the basis of my experiences here in this community as an educator, as a person active in community organizations and social service agencies that I feel drawn to the position that I'm taking today. That is to begin my candidacy in the United States Congress in the 18th century. I begin this journey by saying, first and foremost, I have no personal animosity against Congressman LaHood. I'm certain that he's a good man. I respect his willingness to be engaged in public service. My concern with the Congressman has to do with the positions that he has taken with the positions that the Republican Party has held for the previous generation. I don't believe that the policy positions that the Congressman holds are those that are in the best interest of the working people of the Illinois Eastern District. One of the things that we hope to do in this campaign is to make the Congressman defend the policy positions that he supports. We look forward to the opportunity to debate. Policy debates. This is not going to be about personalities. It's not going to be about the typical noise that you might find in a political campaign. What we want to do is we want to talk about issues, how we can improve the lives, improve the quality of life that we find in the Illinois AT. And again, we look forward to every opportunity that we have to debate along the way. One of the things that I think is maybe a powerful message to, to pass on, and one of the things that I, I often use examples when I teach history lessons. Just to my right, here on the courthouse lawn, there once stood a uh, Civil War cannon. It's a piece of artillery dated back a century and a half ago. When the courthouse was built back in 1897, it was one of the ways that they commemorated the valor of young men from Winter County who had gone off and fought on behalf of you. But an interesting thing happened along the way in 1942. There was a call that went out, a scrap iron drive during the Second World War. Communities across the country were called upon to do what they could to support that particular drive. And in this community, in the community of Eureka, the people voluntarily gave up that particular artifact. They were willing to sacrifice that Civil War cannon that represented so much to them. Now that tells us something. It's a story of shared sacrifice. It's a story about communities and individuals within them being willing to pitch in and do what they have to do when the country demands them. One of the things that we have seen in the past decade is we have seen shared sacrifice. We've seen it in the context that when the United States faced economic crisis, came along in 2008, the people of the United States did what we had to do to make our way through that particular moment, that unfortunate economic moment in our country's history. What we have not witnessed is a fair and equitable recovery. But we've seen that kind of recovery all across the communities, where individuals, the middle class, the poor especially, are able to rise. If we believe in the idea of shared sacrifice, then we also have to believe in the idea of equitable opportunity for all. Every individual should have the opportunity to rise to the position that their God-given ability and talent could bring them. I don't believe that the kinds of policies that Congressman Hood has represented are the kinds of policies that can provide for that kind of opportunity for all. 
Now we are going to be beginning today to cross a very large district, a very wide district. This district runs all the way to the Mississippi River, it runs all the way to the Quincy area, it goes all the way to the eastern portions of McLean County. We're going to be crossing today territory that is very historic. We're going to be crossing the routes that Abraham Lincoln traveled when he traveled the Eighth Circuit during his legal career. We're going to be crossing the paths where freedmen and freed women who were traveling the Underground Railroad made their way north into the land of opportunity that they found here in Illinois. We're going to be crossing through communities where young suffragettes gathered and collected their thoughts and began to organize so that women would have the right to vote. And proudly, Illinois became the first state east of the Mississippi to grant women that particular right. We're going to be crossing countryside where immigrant families settled, farmers, workers, laborers, who saw in America the promise of opportunity, who saw in Illinois a place where they could make a good life. We're also going to be crossing the coal country of Illinois, a place where laborers struggled and some died to win basic rights like the eight-hour day and the right to collective bargaining. You see, this territory that we're crossing today is very, very historic, but we're also going to make it historic in another respect today. This is the opportunity for change in the Illinois 18th. It's an opportunity for change and its time has come. No one who's gathered here today was alive when the last Democratic congressman represented this particular county. You have to go all the way back to 1916 when the last Democratic congressman was defeated in this area. And by the way, he was a gentleman, I love the name, Claudius Ulysses Stone. Guy with a funny name, go figure. And on top of that, he was an educator. He was a principal and a school superintendent in the Peoria Brimfield area. So Claudius Ulysses Stone, a hundred years ago, the last Democratic congressman to represent this particular community. It's hard to imagine that any particular party can claim that it has a moral monopoly on the ideas and the policies that are best for the people over the course of a century. It's hard to imagine that any particular party can say that it will always put forward the best candidates. We only have to look back two years in recent history to see that that's not always the case. And so one of the things that we are doing is we are mounting an undertaking today that is going to be a challenge. It's going to be a difficult six months, we know that. The congressman will probably raise a war chest of millions to keep this seat. He will probably outraise us by three to one. And you have to ask yourself, why? Is, is the conveyor belt of incumbency that powerful? Is the name of a dynastic family that powerful? Is a party that is morally bankrupt when it comes to policy ideas and initiatives that can change the lives and better the conditions of people? Is that powerful? One of the things that we're going to do is we're going to challenge the congressman on every policy position along the way. We will go toe-to-toe -to -toe in doing this in debate. We will be relentless in doing this. And one of the things right now, I'm sure the Republican Party is probably confident that they've got this thing in wraps, that this is a safe Republican district. I believe that we can turn this district purple. And you know, Satchel Page used to have a famous saying, don't look back to something might be gaining on you. And our message today that goes forward from Eureka, that will go forward from Lincoln, that will go forward from McCulloch, and eventually that will go forward from all communities in this district, is we plan to mount a campaign that will take us to all 19 counties. We will not give up on any particular point. We will fight as hard as we can because we believe that the times demand an election based on issues, an election based on policies. Last night, our campaign website went active. You can look at that website at www.rodriguezcongress.com. We also have a social media presence on Facebook and on Twitter. We ask that you follow us there, follow us at the website. One of the things that we will be doing beginning in about two weeks is we plan to roll out specific policy proposals, one a week starting in June, all the way through the election. There will be 20 policy proposals coming forward from the campaign. And we will post those on our social media sites. We'll provide those to local media. We'll also be talking about these, and, and I'll be writing a blog basically on the website as we go through the campaign. You who are gathered here this morning, 
and only. You've seen me in good times and bad times. I think you know my heart. I think you know what it is that's called me to this. It's easy to give up on our political system, to say that it's broken and it can't be repaired. But I really do believe that each one of us one day will have to account not only for the things that we did in our life, but the things that we failed to do when we had an opportunity to make a difference. Every generation that has come before us has always wanted to pass on an America that was better than the one that it had inherited from its parents. Every generation was always promised that this is the American dream, that you will inherit a society where you have opportunity and where you can achieve your dreams. I'm not ready to give up on that yet. I'm not ready to give up on the political process. Yes, it may be broken at the moment. Yes, it may be problematic. But I think there are people of goodwill who are out there. There are people in both parties who can find common ground, who can find the middle. And one of the things that I would argue is after a, after a century here in Woodford County, after a hundred years of Republican domination of the congressional seat, what we are now witnessing is the rise of the middle. This is our time. This is our century. We are going to take this campaign, bring it to all parts of this county. We will stand on the bluffs of the Mississippi. We will stand in the fields of eastern McLean. We will cross the coal country. We will visit the historic communities. We will visit the schools, the churches. We will talk to the families. We will do what it takes to make sure that this race can be one that is competitive. Thank you again for coming out this morning. I appreciate your support. Please keep this campaign in your thoughts and prayers. We need it. Thank you so much.